In this video, we will discuss some examples using the dot product and orthogonality. So I want to start out with uh, just a quick uh, definition of the dot product, and then I'll show some examples for that. So the dot product is uh, very simple. When we're working with two vectors, uh, suppose in this case that maybe it has three components. It's denoted with that little dot right there. So we have uh, two vectors, three components, x, y, z, and a, b, c. Then the dot product is equal to x times a plus y times b plus z times c. So all you do is just match the components, multiply them together, and add them up. Now, uh, one thing that I do want to point out is that the dot product starts with vectors, but what you get at the end is actually just a number, okay? So, for example, if we have the vectors 2, 3, 4, and we want to dot that with negative 5, 6, 7, then what we're going to get is 2 times negative 5 plus 3 times 6 plus 4 times 7, which is just equal to 36. Um, or if we want to look at an example that has maybe slightly different notation, we can look at, say, the vector 3i plus 2j plus 4k dotted with i plus 5j plus, or excuse me, minus 6k. And in this instance, uh, recall that each one of these denotes a different um, component, so we just match the components up and then add them together, or the coefficients on the components, that is. So in this case, we'll just take the 3 from the first i, and then since there's no coefficient here, that means that there's just a 1. And then we add to it the 2 times the 5, and then add to that the 4 times the negative 6. And then what you get is negative 11. So in both cases here, we started with two vectors, and then what we get at the end is a number. Now, this has a very uh, geometric interpretation, which is probably best seen through an alternative expression for the dot products. And this is, if we want to have a vector u times, or excuse me, dot product vector v, that's equal to the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle that is between them. So what we're looking at then is if this is u and this one is v, then this right here is theta. And uh, the dot product gives us a notion of the relationship between the lengths of them and the angles and the angle between them. And one way to kind of think about this is that it's a measure of how similar these two vectors are. And um, maybe a little bit more specifically what this means is it can tell us whether or not two vectors are orthogonal to each other. So if their dot product is zero, then you know that they're orthogonal to each other because cosine of a right angle is equal to zero. If it's positive, then you know that they point in kind of a similar direction. And we know that the angle theta is acute. So that would kind of look like that. And finally, if it's less than zero, we have the opposite idea. So they're going to point in kind of opposing directions, but not necessarily exactly opposite, just kind of like opposite-ish. But the big idea there is just that theta is 
obtuse. So then it would look something a little bit more like so. So if that's V, there's U, data looks like so. So U is pointing a little bit maybe more back that way while V points more to the right. We can look at a quick example of this. We're going to determine if u equal to 4 or negative 2 and v equal to 3, negative 2, 2 are orthogonal or if the angle between them is obtuse or acute. So we're going to take their dot product. So this will be 4 times 3 plus 4 times negative 2 plus negative 2 times positive 2. Add all that up and you're going to get 0. So since their dot product is 0, this then means that they are orthogonal. We are also able to use that equation to find the angle between vectors. So let's do an example of that. That is actually a 24. 7, 24, and negative 9, 40. So um, we know that our dot product gives us a relationship between their length and then the angle between them. So this is what we want to solve for. We can rearrange this a little bit and we get that theta is equal to inverse cosine of the dot product between u and v divided by the product of their lengths. And uh, we do, we have that other expression for dot product that we worked with first. So we're going to use that to get this value here. We're going to find their lengths and then just plug it all in. So u dot v is equal to 7 times negative 9 and then plus 24 times 40, that's equal to 897. Now their length is equal to, for u, equal to square root of 7 squared plus 24 squared. That's just equal to 25. And then the length of v is equal to the square root of negative nine squared plus 40 squared. That's just equal to 41. We can plug all these values into this equation up here to get theta. Simplifying it down just a little bit, that denominator. And uh, this would be the answer to this question here that would give you that angle. Uh, depending on what the problem asks for, like in this case, we're not giving anything specific, so you can just leave it in terms of that inverse cosine. Sometimes it might be requested that you throw that into a calculator and get a decimal, but in this instance, it's totally acceptable to leave it just like that. Another thing we can do is use this to find vectors that are orthogonal to other vectors. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this next example. So 
So we're going to find a vector that is orthogonal to the vector 1, 2, 3. Now, I want to point out that it's a vector, not the vector. There's not a particular one that we're looking for. Um, so we can find any vector whatsoever that gives us orthogonality here. And in trying to do that, we're going to rely on that property of the dot product that says when we take the dot product of two orthogonal vectors, we're going to get zero back. So we want to just try to find any vector such that when we take the dot product with one, two, three, we're going to get zero. If we rearrange this side a little bit to kind of write out that expression for the dot product, what this means is we need one times a plus two times b plus three times c to be equal to zero. And we can fill in really any numbers that we want here because, it, again, it can be any vector that we want. So we can choose any a, b, and c, making this statement true. Um, I'm just going to go with, say, like a equal to negative 1, b equal to negative 1, and c equal to 1. So then what you get then is 1 times negative 1 plus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 1. That all adds up to 0, just like we hoped. So one of the vectors that is a possibility here would be negative 1, 1, and 1. Again, uh, there's a wide variety of answers for this, but uh, this is the main property here that you want to go for when you're trying to find your solution to these types of problems.